Okay, cool. So, yeah, we finished algebra. We finished the first chapter. Uh, we've done also, we went back to grade 10, remind us about complex numbers. I think you found it pretty easy. Uh, we're starting differentiation today. And today, really, 90% of this lesson is just to remind us what is this differentiation about. Now, I'm not going to do all of the revision of grade 11 differentiation. Um, I'm not going to cover continuity. Uh, I'm not going to cover limits. I'm not going to cover uh, calculating differentiation from first principles. So that's stuff that you won't need it for, for this, what we're doing now. You're not going to need it for the test that we're going to do at the end of this term. But you will obviously need it for the exam, uh, end of year exam, and the matric. Okay? So if you look here, it's in page 17, exercise 1.1, you've got a whole bunch of questions about continuity, uh, limits, and some differentiation. I really uh, recommend that you do, you do that, or some of it. It is quite important. I'm not going to cover it. What will I cover? I will cover the like essential stuff that you need for us to carry on this year, okay? So I'm just going to write it down, okay? If I've got a function fx, the derivative of x, by definition, is f of x plus h minus f of x over h in the limit where h approaches 0. So that's like, uh, don't need to write h here, that is the definition of derivatives. And, and you need to be able to use this definition to calculate certain derivatives. And I'm not going to give you an example, you can watch videos that we did last year. Uh, and again, we're not gonna, you're not going to have questions like that in the test that I'm going to give you now, uh, this term, but you will have them at the end of the year. Okay? What I want to focus on is how do we normally calculate derivatives, okay? just to make sure you're remembering. So if let's say I have f of x equal 3x to the power of 5, okay? How do I find the derivative of that? Do you remember that? Yes, we pull the 5 exponent, okay? It's 5, that exponent, times 3, times x, and now we have x to the power of 4. It goes downwards, okay? In other words, 15x to the power of 4, okay? So let's write down that rule, okay? If I have a, a, a polynom, uh, sorry, a function which is a polynom, let's say, uh, it's a poly, uh, yeah, it's a a x to the power of n, okay? Then the derivative of that f is going to be m a x to the power of n minus one. Okay, the exponent goes down one, and then we just multiply by the, the constant which we have. Okay, so that's one thing that you really, like, I need you to be able to get that. How to calculate, that's not essential for this chapter, but, but this, I need you to be on top of this, okay? Next bit, what about if I have, like, a sum of function, okay? We'll call it, let's say, g of x, g of x, or let's say y. I'm going to use some different notations. So we can say y is equal to 2x cubed minus 5, um... Okay, maybe before that, you know what, just, let's just remind us. What about if I have um, 2 over x squared? Okay, how do I find the derivative? Okay, do you remember how we do that? Yeah, but, but the square is at the bottom. So what we're going to write is 2x to the power minus 2. And now I can use the same rule, not a problem. It will be minus 4x to the power minus, minus 3. Are we happy with that? And maybe a last one. What if I have um, 2 over uh, square root of x cubed? So how do we rewrite that g of x? 2 times. Let's start with simpler one. Sorry, let's start with simpler one. To, let's just write simple. So square root of x cubed. How do we write that so we can do the derivative? It's x to the power of? 3 over 2. 3 over 2. Okay, so we, the, the number here is just the exponent at the top. And this is, the root is like a fraction. Great. Okay, so the derivative of x will be? Same rule. 
3 over 2 times x power. A half. No, that's good. 3 half minus 1. It's just a half, not minus. Okay? Okay? And then if we want to write a bit more pretty, 3 square root x over 2. We can write it like that. Okay? Uh, shall we do one last kind of complicated thing? What if I have 2 over... Yeah, now I'm going to go square root or cubic root of x power 5. How are we going to write this baby here? 2 times what? Let's just forget about that it's in the denominator. How would you just write that one? 5 over 5 over 3. 5 over 3, okay? Yeah? But, you're right, because it's at the bottom, you got to slap in a minus. Okay? And that means the derivative will be... So we pull the minus 5 over 3, and minus 5 over 3 times 2, times x to the power of what? So I've got to do it in my head. What do I have to do? Minus 5 over 3 minus minus 1. Or 3 over 3, right? Minus 1. Minus 8 over 3. This ugly thing. You can leave it like that. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to turn it into something else. Okay, no. Sure, you can't leave it like that. you got to say minus 10 over 3. And if you really want to do it, you can have x power 8. Okay, it's just the, the, the thing is, is that you gotta always first of all turn it into a, an x to the power of something. Get rid of the root, get rid of the, from, pull them up from the denominator if you have to, then put a minus there, then you can do, use that one. We're happy with that, so I'll just pause here for a second. Okay. So, the next bit is what happens when we have a sum or a difference in this case of function. I want to do now, and I'm using a different notation, dy to dx. It's the same as f prime x, okay? We're doing the derivative for that function. What, what do you reckon, what, what do I need to do? Well, maybe the first thing I'll tell you is just put that, you know, it'll make our life a bit easier. Let's get rid of that. So, just for x, make it simpler. So, what do you reckon I need to do? What do you... You do each one separately. In other words, what's, what's the derivative of this one? And then this one? Minus 8x. Minus 8x, absolutely. So the rule here is that if we have, let's say, f of x, which is equal to g of x plus minus h of x. In other words, I have a function that is a sum or difference of two function, then the derivative of x, f of x, will be the derivative of f, g, plus the derivative of h, okay? The derivative of a sum of function is the sum of the derivative of each function, plus or minus, yeah? If I have minus, then it's minus, okay? That's pretty easy, I'll just leave it there for a second. Right, so just to kind of clarify, because there were a few questions, okay? In this example, okay, my function, I'll just call it y, but there's some, let's say f of x, is um, a sum or a, a difference of two functions, okay? g was like 2x cubed, h was 4x squared, and it looked like that the, our function was g minus h. And what is the rule? How do I find f, okay? The derivative, so how do I find the derivative of f? Is find the derivative of g, find the derivative of h separately, like we did here, and then minus it. It's, it's so kind of intuitive that you don't even understand why have I done something here? Yes. Okay. Right. right, now we're going to look at a different situation. So what happens if I have a situation where I have, let's say, a function, which is a product of two functions, okay? Let's say I have f of x equal 2x cubed, uh, I'll write it like this, times um, x power 4, okay? Now, how should you do, uh, and, and I want to find out what's the derivative of this, okay? 
and I want to find out what is it. What should you do? What should you do? Yeah, what I should do is multiply it. You're right, by plusing the exponent. It should be 2 to the power x power 7. And then the derivative will be? Yeah, that, that's what you should do. But maybe if I have a rule here that if I'm adding two functions, I can do the derivative of each one of them and add them. Maybe I can also find the derivative of that. So let's, let's see if, if, if that's the case as well. Maybe, I'm putting a question mark, I can find the derivative of that, find the derivative of that, multiply it, maybe I should get the same answer, no? Let's see. What's the derivative of 2x cubed? 6x squared. 6x squared. And x power 4? 4x cubed. 4x cubed. So what am I getting? 24x to the power 5, which is definitely not the same as the, the correct answer. So in other words, I don't have a rule like that, okay, right? I don't have a rule like that. That is wrong, okay? I, I will write it and then I erase it, okay? If f of x is the product, that's what we said, the product of two functions, that does not mean that I can just do the derivative of g times the derivative of h, okay? That is wrong, okay? Are we happy with that? Okay, we will learn next week the product rule, a way for us to actually do that, but in the legit way. Now, you might say, why should I do that? Why can't I just multiply, like, you know, Rachel and, and Alu said, just time it. But sometimes, it's not going to be the case. Sometimes you'll have, let's say, f of x equals sine x times uh, 5x cubed. And then I can't multiply them anymore. But I still want to know the derivative. So there's a rule, but we haven't learned it. Okay? I'll pause here again. Just to finish up this thing, okay, we established that we can't find the derivative of a product of function by multiplying the derivative of each function. What do you reckon about division? Can, if I have f is equal to g over h, can I say the derivative of f is simply the derivative of g divided by the derivative of h? No. no. The answer again is no. We can't do that. Okay? That's the Poincaint rule. Well, I don't know how to say it exactly, but we will learn it also next week. Okay? So that's about that. Th this is pretty much all I need you to know from grade 11. The rest of the stuff you still need to know, but that's more for the exam. So now we're moving on to grade 12. And I want to look at things like that. Let's say f of x equal to 3x plus 2 squared. And I want to, I'm going to pause now in a second, but I want you to tell me what do you think, how can I find the derivative of that? Okay, so I'll just pause here. Alright, so what you guys told me is obviously the right thing. What I, I did, it's a product, it's 3x plus 2 times 3x plus 2. And that, I told you, you can't just find the derivative of each one of them multiplying. We can't do that. So what we should really do is open it up, which is 9x squared. Please check me, guys. I'm notorious for making a mistake. Something like that. Yeah? All right, 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. And then just, okay, now I've got plus, 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 sum of uh, function. I'll just find the derivative of each one of them. 18x plus 12, done. Okay? Are we happy with that? That's really the way you should do. But I'm angling here to find another rule. I'm angling to find another rule. Okay? And um, this is a go with what Alu just told me. Or Alu said, she said, can you just take, because I've got like, like I have here, let's say f of x equal, or let's do another one, g of x equal x squared, then all the, the derivative is going to be 2 times x, right? Maybe I can do the same thing. I'll pull the 2, times it by what? I don't be right. Times by 3x plus 2. Okay. A and then 2 minus 1, so it's 1. Now let's see how much that is. 6x plus 4. Now, so first thing, disappointment, disappointment, it's not the same. But, 
I'm very happy you've done it because what what's what is kind of similar? Yeah. Well, the pattern back to that, if you turn to the the four by three, you'll get basically. So you you got okay. You didn't give the right answer, but if for some reason you multiply this by three, then you will right. I'll, I'll just write it down. So that was six x plus four. Now, if this one we multiply by three, I don't know how to write this. Well, let's say well, I shouldn't write this equal, but you know what I'm saying, okay? Okay, if I multiply it by three, I don't want to write this because that's just wrong, okay? So six x plus four. If somehow I multiply six x plus four by three, I will get the right answer. Okay? Now where where, where can I find the three here? Like why three? Where is that three coming from? Is there a three somewhere? I can see a three. Yeah, but where is the three? Tell me where is the three. In front of the X, there's the three. So, so I've got some, I'm trying to work out together a rule with you. This, what I would suggest is, will work as long as we multiply it by the thing in front of the X. So why is that? Okay, I'm going to try and work it out for you. Okay, so we, we're just together trying to work out the rule. So let's see what, what is that function. That function can be written like this, okay, f of x. I can write it as g of h of x. This is something we came across last year called composite function, okay? We sometimes write it like this, g circle h of x. What does that mean? It means that I've got a certain h of x, which is, in this case, could be, let's say, 3x plus 2. And then the g of x is another function. It will be just squared. So I can make this out of a combination of two functions. Okay? What is 3x plus 2 all that square? It's like, okay, I'm going to take an h of x. I'll take an x. If I apply h on m, then that x becomes 3 plus 3x three plus 2. And then I'll apply a g on m. What does g tell you? Put in the x, square it. Everything you put in, you square. Okay? Right? I'll, I'll repeat again. The h, what does the h do? It takes an x, multiply by 3, add 2. Bam. What does g do? Everything you give him, he squares it. So that on the other side will come up as 3x plus 2. Okay? So that was, if you remember, composite function last time. So we can write this. This is what we're working here. What we're trying to do is something called the chain rule. Okay? It's a rule that helps us to find the derivative of composite function. This is a composite function. Okay? It's made out of g of h of x. Okay? G of h of x. Okay? Now, what is the rule? Okay? If I've got... Uh, let's say I have f of x equals to g of h of x. If I want to find out the derivative of x, this rule tells us that it's going to be equal to g of x times h, uh, the derivative of g times the derivative of h. Okay? I can write it like this, h of x. I just want to write it the same way they write it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, they write it like that. So I'll write it the same way. Okay? I'll explain. What does that mean? I want to find out the derivative. I know that's the answer. I just want to find it without opening. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to avoid opening. So what is... What is g of x? What's the derivative of g in this case? It's, it's just 2x, isn't it? It's 2x because g was x squared. So it's going to be, <coughs> sorry, 2x. So why did you say um, there was a g in the top? I'll just pause, I'll just pause, sorry. So again, now that was uh, not written very nicely. I'll explain the rule, show it to you, and then show it in a few other examples. So. I've got a composite function like this one. In this case, h of x is 3x plus 2, and g is just the square of it. If I want to find the derivative of f without opening it up, 
Okay, because sometimes it can be dif difficult. You might be told me, my, what about if it's 18? That's why we're doing it. Because when it's two, there's no problem to open. What about if it's 18? So the rule tells me, okay, find the derivative of g of h of x. Okay, find the derivative of g of, a, of, g of h of x. And then multiply it by the derivative of h. And I'll just show you. Okay, what is the derivative of g? We said it's 2x, okay? But that's when it's g of x. What's the derivative? What is g of h? Sorry. What if instead of x, I'm putting here h of x? Okay. Well, in that case, sorry, it's going to be the square of h of x. So what will be the derivative of g? Is going to be 2h of x, right? 2h of x power 1 times the derivative of h. Okay, now what is h? h was 3x plus 2. I'll write it down. Oh, we ran out of time. We ran out of space. I'll write it down here. Okay? It's 2 times h of x is 3x plus 2. Huh? h of x was 3x plus 2. I've written it somewhere. Yeah. What's the derivative of h? If you had a function like this, 3x plus 2, what's the derivative of that? What's the derivative of this? Does that ring a bell? I, unfortunately, I erased it before. Does that ring a bell, this thing? That's what, this is what Alu says. Take that 2 times by 3x plus 2, and this is what Rachel realized. We just need to multiply it by 3, and then we get the right answer. Okay? So I know it's very confused in your head now. I just showed that rule. I'll explain it again, and then we'll solve a few examples, and it'll be right. It's just the reason it's confused because I try to kind of get you to come up with that rule by itself. But it's a good, it's a cool thing, but the price you pay is very confusing in the beginning. And now we're going to solve all the problems, okay? All right, so I, I just rewrite this chain rule with a different, a different notation. I want you guys to get comfortable with all notation, but in fact, it might be a bit easier to understand it. I think it was a bit messy with the other notation. So I've got a certain function, f of g of x, composite function, and I want to find the derivative of that function with respect, with respect to x. The chain rule tells me, dead easy, all you've got to do is df to d of x, okay, then I want to make sure, um, yeah, okay, so, okay, they, yeah, no, I'll write it the way they want, is the derivative of f with respect to g of x times the derivative of g with respect to x, okay, if I write it the way I wanted to write it, I'll write it in both ways, because the other way actually kind of makes sense to me anyway, it's the same as, what is that? What is the derivative of f with respect to g? It's df to dg. And what is the derivative of g with respect to x? It's dg to dx. And the d's, if you remember, is like differences, small differences. When the x is very small, the h is very small. Now, if you write it the way I wrote here, it, it kind of makes sense, isn't it? Because the df to dx, this is eventually what we're trying to find out. df to dx. It's like df to dg times dg to dx. And you can kind of see that these cancel out. Even though it's, it's not a fraction. These are not fractions. Okay? But we can kind of see it. Okay? Let's solve some examples. Okay? So I've got a function. You can see it's a composite function. I've got 3x minus 4. And on top of that, I slap a, a root. So the first step, just like we've done everywhere, is to turn that root into uh, an exponent. So I can write it as 3x minus 4 to the power of, not 2, the square root, half. half, okay? Now, what is the derivative? The derivative, just like Alu was thinking, okay? I've got, I'm going to take that, it's going to be half times 3x minus 4 times the derivative of the inside, okay? There's two functions here, okay? G of x is 3x minus 4. That's that's the inside. The f of x, or not the f of x, what's yeah the f yeah the f of the f of g of x or f of x sorry is square root. So I'm 
pulling the half out, times 3x minus 4, time, what do I need to multiply? By the derivative of g, which is? 3. So the answer is 3 over 2, 3x minus 4, and, and you need to open it, okay? And then let it be open it by itself. Okay? Let's do one more. Let's do that, just to get confidence. F of x equal 1 over 6x minus 1 power 4. So first thing, 6x minus 1 to the power I do I have to push it up? Minus 2. Okay? The derivative of x, can you see there's two, x, two function here, okay? You got the g of x is 6x minus 1. The f or uh, yeah, the f of x is going to be uh, x power minus 4, okay? So how do I do that? What should I do that? Minus 4 times 6x minus 1 times, times, okay? So it's minus 24 times 6x minus 1. You obviously need to solve it. If not solve it, just simplify it, okay? Let's do a couple more, just a couple more. Right, so few, three last three examples, which are a bit harder, but first of all, just to clarify, df to dx is the same as the derivative of f according to x. This df to dx comes from, okay, delta f or divided by delta x in the limit that delta x is very small, it's very easy to approach to zero. That's what when we are on the delta we become t, okay? Right, so now I've got this business, and I want to do the derivative of that. So as always, I have to get rid of this root, so we're going to write x squared minus x plus 1 power. Minus. No minus. Just half. Just half. Okay. Right, now I want to find the derivative. So the first part is pretty easy. What should I do? Half. Half times x squared minus x. I just copy whatever inside. Okay. What will be the power of this now? How much? One. We always minusing one, right? The rule we worked uh, with. I was already. So half minus one, minus half. half, minus half, minus half right? yeah, so. And now I need to find out, multiply this by the derivative of the inside. Okay, first of all, I find the derivative of this whole thing, it's half time, as if this was x. Imagine if I have x half. If let's say y was equal to x to the power of half. Well, the derivative then will be half x power minus half, right? You know how to do that, yeah? Now, instead of x, I've got this x squared minus x plus 1. So, well, I'm doing the same thing as if it was just an x. Half times this whole thing times power, x, uh, power minus half. But now I need to multiply it by the derivative of what's inside the brackets. What's the derivative inside the brackets? It's a little bit more difficult now because it's a bit longer. It's what? 2x minus, oh, minus 1. Minus 1. Okay? Alright? So it's the same rule, okay? Again, imagine this whole thing was just x. What will be the derivative? Not a problem. It will be half times x uh, power minus half. So half minus 1 is minus half. But now I don't have x. I've got this whole x squared minus x plus 1. So I'm starting the same thing, I'm saying half times this whole thing, power minus half. But now, the chain rule tells me I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. We have an in, a fun, it's like a babushka, you know babushkas? Yeah. Okay, no babushkas, the, the Russians have like, these little dolls inside, the big dolls inside oh, the big. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what it is. It's a babushka, I've got a small little babushka inside a bigger babushka. And if I want to find the derivative of the whole business, tell me, okay, find the derivative of the big babushka, and then time by the derivative of the small babushka. That's what I'm doing here, okay? I find the derivative of the big babushka, that's the derivative of this bit, time it by the derivative of the small bit. Okay, now I know next time, babushka, okay? Now, I still need to write in a nice way. So, 2x minus 1, that's on top, divided by, I've got 2, Square root x squared minus x plus 1. <laughs> Let's think about that for a second. Okay? Power minus half. What does it mean, power minus half? First of all, minus means at the bottom. Half means square root. 
The 2 was, because it was 2, it was half. And the 2x minus 1 was on top. You can leave it like that. I can't take marks off if you leave it, not leave it like that. But I think we like to tell you to put it like this. Like with grade 9, I usually tell them, put it in a positive exponent. So they understand what, what is this thing. Okay, let's work on these bounds first, okay? Right. How are we going to write this? 3x squared minus 2 to the power of? Minus 1. Okay? So we got the big babushka is just that power minus 1. That's the big part babushka. Okay? And the little babushka is what's inside the brackets. That's the little babushka. Okay? So the derivative is first of all the big babushka. Okay? So what will be the derivative of the big babushka? Pull that one here, so it's minus 1 times square minus 2 to the power. What happens to minus 1? You can't? Minus 2, it always goes down. If we negative, it goes even more negative. Minus 1, okay? it always goes down. Okay, we did the derivative of the big babushka. Now what? We need to multiply by the derivative of the small babushka, which is? Three. Not 3. Because I've got 3x squared. 6? 6 what? 6x. 6x. Right? What's, what's the derivative of this one? Well, the 2 goes, the 2 dies. If you have a constant, there's no, it becomes 0. 3x squared, the derivative is 6x. So let's see if we can write it down nicely. How do you think I can write? Who would you like to tell me? So I've got a minus. Yeah. 6x over 3 squared minus 3 to the power. That's it. Okay? It's, it's important to know actually you have to write it like that. Okay, I'll just leave it for a second. We've got one more example. Yeah. Okay, so the last one we've got a little bit of a tricky one. We've got a square root, but it's not every over everything. First bit, you need to write it down as a a, 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 a brackets power something. So how are we going to write it? I've got 3. What should I do with that? Uh, by, minus one. by minus 1. You're right. So it's square root x plus 2 or that power minus 1. You happy with that? Okay, now the derivative. Okay? So we got to think. What is the big babushka is 3 times something power minus 1. Okay? 3 times x power minus 1. That's the big babushka. The small babushka is what's inside the brackets. Okay? Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll write it down. Okay? So, this is the small babushka. Okay? That is what we're going to have to eventually multiply by the derivative of. Okay? The big one, I'm not going to circle it because it's going to be too messy. All that, all the rest, is the big babushka. Yes. Okay, so what's the derivative? First of all, derivative of the big babushka. What would that be? Uh, minus, three. minus 3 times square root x plus 2 power minus, minus 2. As if pretending that the whole small babushka was just x. You just That's what you're doing. You're using the derivative as if the whole small babushka is just x. Okay? But then, that's what I always said in the beginning of the video. Now we need to multiply by the derivative of the small babushka. What's the derivative of the small babushka? Half x power minus half. Half x power minus half. So it's a bit tricky. The, the 2 died. Okay? We have half. What is x? Square root x. It's x power half. So the half times x power minus half. Okay? If, if you're not following that, I'll write it down here. Okay? If I've got the derivative. That's just going to make things more confusing. Are you happy with this? Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. that's okay. Right, so now we need to write it nicely. That's hard. Okay? I've got the minus 3 above. I've got anything above, else above? No. No, it's all negative exponents. Oh, okay. okay, so what do I have at the bottom? I have a 2. What else do I have? That one. Square root x plus 2. What do I need to? Square. Square time. Sorry? Yeah, I, I think so. That's as hard as it gets for us right now. Okay? I'll stop here.